much to you. Welcome, welcome, welcome to the best podcast in the world, The Corpy Show. And I'm your host, Corpy. And are you excited? Because I'm excited. This is the first episode, and we're going on a journey together. I don't know where we're going. <laughs> we might go to heaven or hell, but we're going somewhere. Welcome to The Corpy Show. And the first thing I want to talk about is a subject that's on everybody's mind. It's on my mind. It's on everybody in America's mind right now. Where's the money, Joe? Uncle Biden. Sleepy Joe. Mr. President. Where's the money? Where's the new stimmy? We need the stimmy. The holidays is coming. Unemployment been cut off a month. A month. A month. No, no weekly payments. How y'all gonna do us like that? Uncle Joe, turn the stimulus machine back on. Turn the unemployment machine back on. Turn the money printers back on. Y'all been printing money the whole pandemic. Keep the pandemic going. It's not a pandemic. It's a pandemic. You know what I mean? <laughs> you need to understand, Sleepy Joe. You can't just give people all this money and then take it away. We was living the good life out here. Allegedly. Some people. Not me. I, I work hard. I work very hard. But Uncle Joe, the holidays is coming. We need that money. And Kamala, we ain't forget about you, sis. We did not forget about you, sis. We knew you was going to do this. You're not going to speak up for us? I thought you was like 10% black. <laughs> You're not going to speak up for the people, the world? A sister wouldn't have did that. A sister would have had to, had to stimmy approve the next day. You wanted to cut unemployment off. How are you just going to cut? give us all this free money and cut it off? We can't get no PPV, no PPE, no PB&J. We can't even get a sandwich. We can't even get a peanut butter and jelly sandwich from y'all. Sleepy Joe. Sleepy Joe. Where's the money, Joe? We need the STEMI back on. The holidays is coming. I'm trying to get the 82-inch TV. I need that unemployment back on. Them PS5s is coming back in stock. Uncle Joe. <laughs> Where's the money, Joe? Stop playing with me. You're wildin'. We need that bread. We need that bread, Kamala. One of y'all, we elected y'all Democrats because we thought that y'all was going to give us more money. If we didn't think y'all was going to give us more money, certain people would have kept Trump. At least Trump was letting people do whatever they want. We would have had money. We had money under Trump. We. That's what I'm saying. I'm not a Trump supporter, of course. You see the skin. I'm not a Trump supporter at all. But he, was, he wouldn't have did us like this. Barack wouldn't have did us like this. Sleepy Joe, I know you're tired. I know you're tired. It's been a long life. It's been a long life, Joe. You finally here as president. You lost all of those times. But we can't get no money, Joe. You don't like us? Bet. We're going to elect people. We're going to get uh, Ted Cruz and them. Ted Cruz, which one of y'all got money for us at this point? All y'all politicians are the same. Y'all talked all of this stuff. Y'all had us tap dancing and doing all of this. Like, oh, we're going to get Trump out. The world's going to be better. And then y'all cut the stimmy off? Democrats? How y'all going to do us like this? And y'all think we're going to let it rock? Election time, best believe whoever got the best <laughs> election plan, who gonna give us the most money, we gonna elect you. You know what I mean? COVID is dropping nine remixes every day. It's a new remix to COVID every week coming out. COVID dropping more remixes than Diddy. And y'all not gonna give us no more money? That's all right. Elections is coming soon. Who got the stimmy? If you are a politician, you need to make <laughs> your... Campaign promise, I got the stimmy. <laughs> I got unemployment back on. I got the money for y'all. Because at this point, you can't just give people money and take it away. That's not going to end well. But let's get to the focus of today's episode. We do have a theme for today's episode. And I want to talk about Robert Kelly, the R. Also, as I like to call him now, inmate number 665789 of the United States Correctional Facility. He is in, he got cases in every state at this point. He belongs to the whole system. You got cases in every state for that sex trafficking and being nasty. Men, stop being nasty. You're going to end up like Robert. And that's why we have a special guest that we're bringing on. He used to work for the R. His name is Ray. And he agreed to come on the show to tell us about Robert a little bit. And just give us an understanding of how this guy that was a black hero goes and becomes a pedophile now. 
a, a pariah of the system. So we're going to bring Ray on. I'm getting a little alert. We're going to bring Ray on to talk to y'all before we get into the full details of the episode. And just remember, I filtered his voice to protect his identity because Robert got the goons. Robert got the goons. You know what I mean? Robert got the goons. And they they after Ray for because Ray is Ray has knowledge on some things. So I'm gonna bring Ray up in a little bit to talk about the R and just help us get an understanding of this guy. Robert, you was a black hero. You we loved all your songs, but little did we know you were singing about little kids. We now listen, we all joked and we all laughed about it, but then the more cases came out, Robert. People had to survive you. If people had to survive you, and they had to make a show called Surviving R. Kelly, you did something wrong in life, bro. So we're gonna bring Ray on now. I think he's. I think he's ready. I'm getting alert. Let me put my headphones on. Uh, hello, Ray. All right. Let me see if this thing's working. Ray, hello. Hey, is this working? Hello. Hello. Hey. Hello. Hey, Ray. Yeah, I can hear y'all. Yeah, I'm here. Hey, Ray, what's up? It's so good to hear you, Ray. Welcome to the show. Just tell the people a little bit about yourself and what you used to do for the R. Thanks for having me, Corby. Mm -hmm. Well, I'll tell the people. Uh, I was his role manager from 1994 mm -hmm. to 2004. Okay. It's okay. How did you get that job? What does being a role manager entail, Ray? Tell us about it. Ray, you there? I originally mm -hmm. started as his bag handler. Okay. I would carry his bags, and then I moved up to his personal rag holder. As a personal rag holder, I would get his rags because, you know, bald niggas sweat a lot. So he would sweat on the stage, and I would get R. Kelly a new rag, and I would throw him the rag on stage, and that's how we built our rapport. And then I moved up to his personal driver. And... Corporate, that's when I started to see things. Oh, yeah. That Tell no me. man should see. Mm. It was crazy. It was, it was, it was coloring books everywhere. He was, a, he was a mad man. And I was a part of it. I hate myself for, 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 for even being in the circle, the circle of evil. Wow, listen, Ray, don't beat yourself up. Sometimes we put ourselves in situations with bad people and we don't know what's going on until it's too late. But could you uh, tell us a story about Robert that a lot of people don't know or anything, Ray? Well, Robert liked to carry a lot of lollipops for the kids. Robert always had a lot of candy on him. He said it was to help him sing better, but we all knew. It was for them kids. Robert never really got to be a kid, allegedly. So, so he, that's why he couldn't read. You got to remember, Robert couldn't read. So, oh, so yeah. me and staff, we about had that. to read for Robert. We had to read him bedtime stories. We had to read him Peter Pan. And then he started thinking he was Peter Pan. Then we read him the Pied Papa. And he thought he was the Pied Papa. Wow. So it sounded like he was living in a fantasy world and was totally delusional. But how close were you to him? How do you think he got like this, allegedly? Always remember, it's allegedly here. Can you tell us, Ray? Robert never really talked about his family while we was on the road. He would always talk about uh, uh, going to Disney World and, and uh, Astro World and all these amusement parks. And we was thinking, Robert, just sit, make this money. Get us out the hood and let's go. But Robert always wanted to do kids stuff. And it's like, man, we was almost 30, Robert. And then I remember when it all started. Uh, we we was in a, we was in Orlando and a, a theme park. I'm not going to say the name because it's a family-friendly place. Uh -huh. And the things Robert was Don't doing do there was not family-friendly. Uh, you got some water? I don't even want to talk about Get this. Give him some water. So, Give him some water. So, so Robert, Robert skipped the line at the water park mm -hmm. and, and slid down with a little girl. We said, Robert, Robert, what you doing? What's he doing? And that's when we seen his Mr. Hyde side. Because Robert was always nice. 
But when he when he came to get what he wanted, he couldn't get what he wanted. Mm -hmm. He couldn't read something. He got frustrated. Robert go crazy. Crazy. Robert go crazy, and we wouldn't know if he was serious or not. Cause when Robert go crazy, he starts singing. So mm -hmm. we don't know if he happy or sad, cause he's singing. But he doing angry singing, like trapped in the closet. He'd go over to the stairs, uh, up to the stairs. Robert grabs the pistol. Why he grabbing the pistol? like that. Robert was crazy when he couldn't get what he wanted. And all Robert really wanted was some kids. Because Robert was a kid at heart. It hurts me to, to talk about this, but what Robert was doing was evil. That's not right. I can't show my face in public because of the things that Robert did. Man, I hear you, Ray. It sounds like you're so tormented by all of this. And... Is it anything else you still remember, or just any little antidotes you could give us before you go, or anything about the R? One time, Robert had me sneak him in a Chuck E. Cheese, and he stole all the kids' tokens, and he was giving them back out to the kids. Mm. It was crazy. But did you know that that I believe I could fly is named after me because I was so good at my job. Tell us about of it. Of flying around and making moves for R. Kelly, that was the good part of the job. But it was even more bad. Did you know that he had a sex dungeon in each room, and each for sex real? dungeon had a different candy in it? One will have a bowl of M&Ms, one will have a bowl of Skittles, Damn. one will have a bowl of Starbursts, different candies all over the house. It was disgusting. Nasty. I got so fat eating Mars bars back in that day. Corby, you don't understand the terror that I went through. One time, we was teaching R. Kelly how to read. I forgot and about that. And we was that. teaching him the read. basic uh, syllables and how to put the words together and the vowels and the nouns. Phonics. And, and he snapped at us. He, 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 he almost stabbed the personal chef, Letty. She was a nice, sweet, Guatemalan lady, he almost stabbed her with a pencil. And then he didn't even apologize after. He just went right back to writing a song. He would what? get frustrated when we tried to teach him how to read. That's crazy. Almost like he didn't want to read. He he said he could he could see the words in his head. And even though he couldn't say them, he knew what the words meant in his heart. Even though he didn't really know how to put the words together and read them. But he knew what it meant in his heart. That's the kind of person R. Kelly was. See, he was magnetic when he wanted to be. Uh -huh. uh, he would he would go on the stage and he would he would put the he would put the bandana on and he would become the pot piper from You're Chicago, wild, the Chicago stepper. He would put the gators on and the in the six piece suit. What? And he would go out there and step in the name of love. But it wasn't always love. He would do too much. That's not love. And, and, and then, and I'm just so happy that, that you allow me to get this off my chest. Thank you. Listen, you're not welcome because you're a dummy. Your your your, your story sounds crazy. You sound you sound as delusional I feel as a shame. Robert. So ashamed for for my part in in the lives that I hurt. With this man, this man that I looked up to, this man that bought me my first do rag on tour in Indianapolis. You shouldn't look up to men. Then. Sold out. That's a problem. Events. This was my mentor, but I learned all the wrong things. Never teach a grown man how to read. For real. They will get mad at you. When you teach them big words. Uh -huh. Thanks for letting me share, Corby. You're welcome. You're so welcome. You, you, you're going to filter this, right? Because because they're looking for me. I know. You, you, you already told us that R. Kelly got the goons and they're looking for you because he's currently fighting 90 court cases right now. And they're just... just... <sighs> We're done here with this uh, interview. But just to say, like, Robert, Robert, you're wildin'. You guys just heard from Ray, and he just told y'all a little side of the, just a little glimpse into the life of a predator. 
Like, we all got mixed feelings and our issues and our emotions about Robert, but at the end of the day, at the end of the day, like I said before, if they got to make a documentary called Surviving R. Kelly, somebody had to survive you, multiple people had to survive you, and they had to go through this because of you, you're the issue. That's why you're in jail. Listen, never will I advocate the prison industrial complex because the prison industrial complex is modern day slavery. I will never, ever be privy to or just endorse a black man going to jail. But certain niggas need to be in jail. <laughs> like, like, certain niggas need to be in jail. Like, I do not, if you got railroaded and you not you don't belong in jail, good. If you trapping, I don't I don't support people going to jail for money. If you going to jail because of money, that's fine. But what you did because of the money, you killed somebody, you hurt somebody, you did that, certain people belong in jail. Never will I advocate black people going to jail. But certain people need to be in there. Like Robert, Robert, you got sex dungeons in state to state. You bringing girls on the tour bus from state to state. That's why the FBI is on you. Listen, when you start doing crime state to state, that's when the FBI comes. When you're doing Fed time, ask anybody that's doing Fed time. You had to be doing something really out there to give Fed time. If you got cases in every state, co-current. They call it co-current. They running your sentences, co-current. They're going to run your trials, co-current. That means let's just do it all at once. That means you was that bad that DAs and prosecutors from different states had to just be like, all right, where, where, where y'all want to finish R. Kelly at? And of course, New York City. New York City, that's where we going to finish you. Barbecue, Robert. Brooklyn. Robert, Robert don't even know about Brooklyn, but Robert been in Brooklyn courthouses, Manhattan courthouses. He from Chicago. They couldn't even let Robert do his trial in Chicago. They said, nah, buddy, you got to come you gotta come to the New York. We got to take care of you the right way. We got to fricassee fry you. 100 years. <laughs> What's that? Fed time. Uh, 2,000 months. Oh, you be thinking like, oh, that's cool. Then you start counting. 2,000 months? That's my <laughs> 3,000 months. That's my life. Robert. And to all predators. Listen, that predator stuff, that pedophilia, that stuff you feel, that's that's negative emotions. You liking kids? You're not supposed to like kids biologically. Biologically, if you you all of this stuff that you doing and you feeling, these are misplaced emotions. And this is what I'm saying. It's about your mental state. Robert couldn't even read. You a multi-million dollar hit-making machine, and you can't read? You are fundamentally flawed. And let me let me say this again. Fundamentally flawed. Let's talk about it. A lot of people are fundamentally flawed. That means their logic, their basic understanding of concepts and life and just everything is messed up. They don't think right. A lot of people don't think right. That's why they do bad decisions and make bad choices. We all do it. We are all fundamentally flawed to an extent. And Robert is no exception to this rule. You had all these millions, all this talent. You had all this talent. God gives us this talent. God gives everybody different amounts of talent. I know it's not fair, but he makes some people more talented than others. Sometimes we are there to just watch people, and we all watched Robert become this R&B legend. We believe this nigga could fly. We believe that he could fly. Little did we know, this, he's low brown it. He's a mole. He's a rat. He's underground. We thinking this guy could fly, and he's in the bottom dwelling on little kids. You could get any woman, grown woman that you want in the world, and you chasing little girls? You ruining Aaliyah? Imagine what Aaliyah life would have been if she didn't meet R. Kelly. But for her to meet R. Kelly, she had to meet Timberland. So I like to think in parallel realities. But imagine a reality where Aaliyah was a healthy, normal girl, didn't meet R. Kelly, went to the music business, did her thing. But like I said, that's not how life works. Sometimes you're going to meet a predator. And sometimes you need to know who you're dealing with. Listen, men, 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 men. If you're a man and you listen to this, we have this power. Women, some people call it the patriarchy. Some people call it masculinity. By whatever force that controls the universe, we on top of women. It's debatable. But like I said, 
This is the world that we live in. We have an obligation. We need to call things obligation. We have an obligation to protect women, especially black women. We always protect black women here, you know what I mean? This is a black woman show. Listen, this is my auntie Cleta. Oh, auntie Cleta no, recorded no. that for me. Just for me. And my auntie did that. Because black black women are the DNA. You know the black woman DNA has all the mitochondria and all the DNA information of the whole world. So my mother's a queen. Shout out to my mother. You know what I mean? But listen, we have to protect women. That's it. That's it. Any any man you got a man view of not protecting women. That's it. You can't. Don't watch this show. Hang up right now because this is a women friendly show. This is a show for everybody except Robert Kelly. You know what I mean? And Ray. Ray is banned. Ban Ray. <laughs> Ray can't call him no more. He can't. Call. He got the Chicago goons. Our, yo, listen. Robert got the goons. R. Kelly got goons. R&B singers got more goons than rappers. I don't know if y'all knew that. R&B singer goons is different because they got to protect them against crazy women. Our rappers, group, rappers, uh, entourage, they don't be shooters like this. Some of them be shooters. Don't get me wrong. But a lot of them just be regular people that follow the rapper. R&B people goons, a lot of R&B singers got the goons. <laughs> they got the ghouls. You never met an R&B singer that wasn't about that life since the Temptations. They they got the pocket knives back in the 70s. Barry Gordy had them strapped with the pocket knives. R&B singers is about that life. R&B singers might be more gangster than rappers. And y'all know this. I don't got to tell y'all this. Y'all know this. Ask, ask about Ray J in the streets. Ray J. <laughs> Listen. But Robert. Robert, Robert, Robert. Robert, like where I was going with this, Robert, you had an obligation to people, to women. You be, When you become this celebrity, you become bigger than life. Sometimes you have to give back to that life. And I know it's uncomfortable for a lot of people to, to realize, but a lot of people are fundamentally flawed. They don't have that, that, that common sense. Common sense is not common. Listen, you heard it. You know what we say here because You're a, dummy. a lot of people's dummies. Common sense is not common. Robert had all these hit records, uh, platinum plaques and all of this stuff, but he ain't had no damn common sense. If you don't got common sense, you uncommon. Get away from me. Get get. Away. I do not like people with basic street smarts, basic common sense. You are, you are a multi-million dollar hit record machine. You got all of these songs with everybody in the industry. You thought you were just going to be doing all of this nastiness. For years, and we all laughed about it. We see him pissing on the kid back in the day. We was all laughing. Whenever you seen an R. Kelly, I still have never seen an R. Kelly tape. And that's one of my my internet things. I've I've never seen it. Even when it was out back in the day, I've never seen an R. Kelly tape. I just never seen it. It wasn't that I wasn't trying to see it. I just never seen it. It was just oh, everybody else seen it because that was a different internet. If that would have happened in twenty twenty one, oh, we all seen the, the R. Kelly tape. But R. Kelly tape was like the first viral. Like video, right? Like you was the first viral video. We knew you was nasty, but we all enabled him. Just like Ray came on and enabled him a little bit. To an extent, we enable these pedophiles. We enable these pedophiles to be pedophiles. We enable these predators to be predators because we, oh, she was a fast girl. We sell, especially about black women. She was fast. She dressed that way. She's provocative. No, she dressed how she want to dress. Let women be women. That's it. Let women be women. Don't worry about their bodies. Don't worry about their issues. Don't worry about anything going on with women. If you're not a woman, don't worry about other women issues. That's it. How hard is that for us to mind our business? Sometimes we need to mind our business for situation with other people. But for stuff like Robert, we can't be enablers. We enabled this man, the whole black community. I'm going to say it. I'm going to say it. I'm going to say it. Auntie Cleo, tell him. Oh, we enabled no, this man. No. We enabled this. We're going we're gonna to get a thumbs down for it. We enabled this man to be a pedophile. We 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 heard the cries. We heard all of the rumors and the whispers, and we all just, oh, that's R. Kelly. He makes beautiful music. He 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 believes he could fly. He got I wishes. He got all all these. We all got an R. Kelly record that we love. We got to be comfortable with that, knowing that that song was probably about little kids. I know you probably got an R. Kelly song that you love. And that you, uh, no, this is my jam. That jam is about jamming little kids, all right? Allegedly. Allegedly. 
And it's like we have to be comfortable knowing that we enabled this man to be a predator. And especially as men, we enable our friends to be predators. We know our man is on some creep stuff. Tell him, you're a creep, bro. I don't, personally, I don't bring, I know one of my friends or dudes I be around be on some creep, extra creepy stuff with women. I don't bring them around my female friends. Because why? Because I'm the barrier. I'm the bridge. We need to start making this bridge predators on this side. And everybody else on this side, men, you know your man's is a predator. You know something is wrong with him. He got a he got a little inclination towards little kids. You need to clip that. You need to clip him and you need to tell him about himself. And I would never advocate calling the police. But you could call um call Peter on these dogs. Call Peter. You don't call the police, call Peter on a pedophile. And they enabled Robert to be this because he had all this money, all this success, and all this. But he couldn't read. How you how you somebody mans and they can't read? If you my mans, we go into GED classes. We <laughs> right, Where I got to start you at grade school? You got to be like uh, Billy Madison. <laughs> you got to go back to grade school. They should have took R. Kelly to the Billy Madison joint. Like, yo, you got to go back to grade school. You got to start school all over. You're a big dummy. <laughs> You're a dummy. You're a dummy. <laughs> Robert. Robert. We, you was a black hero. We don't even have that many black heroes. And instead of being a black hero, a champion, making all these these songs, you made all these love songs, but you was loving kids? Robert, how dare you? How dare you? And we let it happen. We knew. We knew since 2004, since the R. Kelly video came out. That's from 2004. Is, what's that, 18 years? We knew for almost 18 years, 18, 19 years. What you was, man. We knew it with Aaliyah. It was rumors since Aaliyah. You ruined this girl life. Undoubtedly. Undoubtedly. AJ ain't nothing but a number. I can't hear that song without thinking about cringing. I cringe. I cringe. And all these artists that got songs with you, they can't even play their songs no more because you ruined it. Imagine you got the hit records with R. Kelly. Imagine how Mr. Biggs feel. I can only imagine how Ronald Isley feels. Because you know they always asking Ronald Isley questions about you all. Ronald Isley is 900 years old. And he got to spend his last years on God's green earth justifying you. But Mr. Biggs, you should we should have took him out. We knew. Mr. Biggs knew. Mr. Mr. Biggs got to get the round of applause. Mr. Biggs knew R. Kelly wasn't shit. We should have all listened to Mr. Biggs. We all should have left him in the desert. And what year was that? I don't see nothing wrong. He, he ain't seen nothing wrong. R. Kelly told us he ain't seen nothing wrong with a little bump and grind. And we enabled this man because as a society, especially on social media, we are enablers. We know people are bad people. Listen, I need y'all to stop thinking that people are good. It's a lot of bad people. It's a lot of bad people. Bad. Bad to the core. I don't care how they got bad. I don't care what they family issues and all of that. You have a choice every day to be a good person or a bad person. If you picking 365 days out of year to be a bad person and your your track record is mud, like R. Kelly name. Say R. Kelly name. Somebody be like, uh, uh or if they gotta survive you. If people gotta survive you. It's a big problem. You you messed up in this game of life. And we only got one role on this game of life. And then your name is as good as it's supposed to be. Your name's supposed to be gold out here. You say Corpy, people will be like, he's an asshole, but he's a lovable asshole. He's he's a, he's my asshole. Not he's an asshole. He's he's Robert. Uh, uh. Like, don't be that guy. Don't don't be that guy that a guy has to do podcasts about. Don't be the guy, that inmate number 65. What y'all think R. Kelly is doing in jail? I know they making R. Kelly sing in jail every day. If, I, if I'm, I'm doing life in a prison and R. Kelly is there, yo, we're going to start at your first hits. Um, yo, imagine being in the jail with R. Kelly. I know people sending uh, letters and stuff, making calls. Yo, yo, R. Kelly in here. <laughs> this nigga crazy. <laughs> R. Kelly crazy He ain't here singing for Doritos R. Kelly in the jail singing for Doritos And for cups of noodles I know what you in there doing Robert R. Kelly say you got some wine <laughs> You got some wine You got to sing <laughs> I believe <laughs> Jail idol <laughs> You know what they making people do at jail Robert Robert <laughs> You want the TV rights 
Robert, Robert said, I can't, I can't watch no TV. Robert, you know you got saying <laughs> They make it. Robert don't even. Robert, you good in jail. You good in here. You don't got to. You don't got to pay for cigarettes. You don't got to pay for none of this. We just going to need a tune or two. <laughs> they probably making Robert sing other people's songs. Yo, Robert, I need you to sing this Luther Vandross. I don't know the words. I can't read. Robert, you better learn how to read, nigga. <laughs> you and Rob, Robert, you're going to learn how to read in jail. Listen, Robert, what you need to do in jail is find you a religion. They got mad religion. You become a Muslim in jail. You become a Christian. You become Jewish. You need to find God. You need to find God in one of them books. There's a lot of books about God. God got multiple books about him. <laughs> pick a book, pick a God, pick something. You need Jesus. You're gonna find it and you're gonna find Robert gonna come out of Robert Robert X. <laughs> you need something. Cause you live in fundamentally flawed. This fundamentals that we be messing up in. Oh, I'm gonna be mm, I don't we be on the fence too much about who we need to be instead of being decisive about our flaws. Make peace with your flaws. Robert knew he couldn't read. Robert knew he was a pedophile. Robert should have got away from the spotlight. You was not meant to be a celebrity, bro. If you knew you got all of these issues, you can't even read. And then the people around you, but they, but then again, they was there for the money and the motivation and just being access to celebrity. The things people do to have access to celebrities and chase clout is disgusting. It's disgusting. It's disgusting. Oh, no, no. It's like y'all chase this celebrity. Y'all know this man can't read. Y'all know he's chasing little girls. Why are you hanging around him? He's bad vibes. Tell him he's bad vibes. A lot of times, friends and people be around us and they don't tell us we're bad vibes. Or we don't tell them they're bad vibes. We need to normalize telling people you're bad vibes. Your energy is disgusting. That's my new thing. I tell people now, if you're around me <laughs> and I don't like your energy, your energy is disgusting. Get away from me. Get away. Because we need to get this out in the open. We don't say the things that we know we need to say. And then by the time we say them, it's too late. Come on, man. Come on, man. I didn't mean to play the sound effect. So I have this thing over here. Keep on that white keep looking. You're wild. You're a dummy. You don't like to watch the video. You know, this, this is the future. Welcome to the best podcast in the world. They don't even they don't even know what we're gonna be doing over here, right? But Robert, I looked up to you. And now I have to look down at you. That's bad. People had to survive you. And we all watched it. Oh, surviving R. Kelly. Like, oh, yeah. These girls wanted it. Nobody wants to get sexually abused. <laughs> why, why are we still having these conversations in 2021 about sexual abuse and all of this stuff? Nobody wants bad things to happen to them. So stop making women um, the instigators. Like, they wanted this stuff to happen to them. Men, you need to... Men, do you want to get... Sexually harassed and abused and objectified all day, night long? Like, no, because you, you never had that experience. A lot of y'all never had people chasing y'all. I've had women chase me and try to abuse me. It's not fun. It's not fun. Abuse is not fun. And we need to stop normalizing, oh, that, oh, it's, it's, what's good for men is bad for women. No, it's all bad. People chasing you, people making you the object of their affection and stalking you and having negative behaviors towards you is disgusting. And at the Corpy Show, I'm here to help you with your insecurities and your fears. Like Robert. Robert, I hope this episode finds its way to you and you find God in there, inmate number 65643. I believe, because in jail, you can't fly. You're going to fly to the thing and they're going to snipe you down. Like, get, get down, Robert. Because we better sing. Even the warden in, <laughs> the warden's in jail making Robert sing. Can you bring R. Kelly to my office? Robert, s sing that song I like. <laughs> Me, Sherry, I'm... he and his singing other people's song. <laughs> they don't even know your song. <laughs> you, in this, you in the jail with your bunk mate. Robert, move your body like a snake. Move your body like a snake. Move your body like a snake. <laughs> Yo, Robert, you cut my hotel. <laughs> this is not funny. But like I said, predators. Stop enabling people to do bad things to other people. And that's really where I'm going. We enable all these other people to do bad things and we watch them happen. And we just, oh, oh. But then we have opinions on it. Which is, makes it even worse. Stop being on the fence about abuse. Abuse is abuse. What Robert did was wrong. 
I looked up to him. I loved Robert's songs. I still got affection for them. But now in the back of my mind, in the front of my mind, I have to know, this might be about some little kid. Is this song about Aaliyah? That's what I really ask myself now. Is this about 15-year-old Aaliyah? Is, wait, like, what, what song? Mm, mm. Let, let me not listen to this. Let me go put on the millions of other R&B singers I can listen to. Literally. It's new R&B singers coming out every day that sing about the same shit. So why am I listening to this monster? You still enabling a monster that did bad things to other people? You're a monster too. A lot of bad things that happen in this world is because other people allow it. Just like Nazi Germany, they watch Hitler become Hitler. And then when Hitler became Hitler, they enabled it. A lot of bad things in this world is because good people do nothing. This is a quote. This is a quote. You could say I quoted it, but it's a famous quote. A lot of the bad that happens in the world is because good people do nothing. They just stand by and let things happen. Just like we see all these atrocities, we see all these bad things happen to people. And just because it's not happened to us and our family, we we become numb to it. Because that's how desensitized we are as a society. And that's bad. You need to feel something. Not feeling anything is the worst feeling at all. And we need to learn how to feel. I think that's what we're going to do for our next episode. We're going to do a feeling episode. Where I'm going to explain to you what I learned about feelings and just in general. And just like, and that's why I'm not necessarily in tune with the world extra now, but it's just like my level of feelings is I can control my feelings. I can give you more feelings. I'll give you less feelings. I always engage in each situation knowing how much feeling I'm going to give into it and how much feeling is needed. That way I don't give all my emotions and stuff to one situation or another situation. It's a balanced set of emotions because I'm a Libra. And it's still Libra season. You hurt? And I know that. You don't like me much, do you? But welcome to the best podcast in the world. And that's all I really want to talk about is, is this episode. It's just like these predators, like, like stop, stop thinking that it's cool to hurt people and think it's not going to be repercussions. R. Kelly sat high up on the R&B charts. You got all these plaques, got all these awards, got all of this, all of this fame. And instead of using it to help people, you took away from people, children, not even people that's whole people yet. Kids are not even whole people yet. They're still discovering themselves. At my big age, I'm still finding out myself. We're still finding out stuff about ourselves as adults. Can you imagine being a kid now with COVID and all of this going on and just trying to formulate your mind? Our minds are always developing. A lot of people say that we stop growing. We never stop growing. I never stop growing. I'm trying to get as big as I want as an oak tree. It's trees that's alive for 100, 200 years in this world. We have to look at nature. It's things, rocks, formation, thousands of years, rocks. You have to stand firm. Things are evolving. Rocks are always evolving. You got new bugs living in, new plants growing on the side of the rock. You think a rock is just going to stay still. No, that rock is growing. It's life. Life is always flowing around and it's growing and becomes stagnant. Become st that's how you get sick. Water becomes backed up. That backed up water is not flowing. Water don't flow. It becomes backed up. Just like your toilet will get backed up with what? Shit and toilet paper and all of this stuff gets backed up because the water is not flowing. Life is meant to flow. That's why God shows us water. Water is the most dangerous thing in the world. That's why it covers the earth. You can drown off a cup of water. I could drown off this. Not saying I would, but just saying you could. You need to understand these examples that life put before us. All right? We need to understand these situations that we get into. Life is always flowing. Life is always going. Life is always changing. And the people around Robert enabled him. They didn't stop him and say, yo, this might, this might not be a bad look for your career, bro. Nah, you have these little kids. We're going to take you to rehab. Because people just, when people are around you that are using you and manipulating you, they're not going to tell you right from wrong. They're just going to let you go on your path. Real friends like me, your best friend in the world, Corpy. If you don't have nobody telling you the realness in life, come to the Corpy show. All right? Come here. And we will tell you right from wrong. I will always tell you when you're messing up. I have no problem. I like telling people when they mess up. Let me, let me bring my little stage life closer. We're still getting the lights and, and all of this stuff set up. I'm, I'm so happy you guys are here. I'm so thankful and appreciative. My birthday was a week ago, exactly a week ago. And my new... My new theme for this year is gratitude and latitude. Shout out to my boy Preezy. He told me that two weeks ago. Latitude and gratitude. You have to be appreciative of what you have. And Robert wasn't appreciative of that. 
Robert took all his talent, all his skills, and all his stuff and used it for evil. He became a villain. He's the villain of R&B now. He's a villain. He's a whole music villain. He's he's Harvey Weinstein. He is right there. You are you are the same. This pedo and you need to stop trying to take advantage of other people just because you're in a position of power. That's not what power is for. That's why karma will get that ass. Harvey Weinstein in jail blonde. Harvey Weinstein went blonde, deaf. Harvey Weinstein in jail breaking down. The universe will break you down. If you are not living right, the universe will break you down. That's why you have to maintain some sort of just like goodness in you. You don't have to be good all the time. All right. That's a whole nother thing. You can, but make a choice to be mostly good. Be 75% good and keep that 25% to yourself of bad. Make that I eat ice cream 12 a.m. Because nothing's better than ice cream at 12 a.m. We all got our vices. We all got our flaws. Learn to live with yours. And if you need help with your vices and your flaws, go get professional help, especially if you have millions of dollars. You could have easily got rehab. Sex is the most powerful addiction in the world. People think sex is not addicted. I'm addicted to sex with grown women. Like, not with with little kids. Like, how? How? Again, if you, you're not living right, you need to understand. If you're drinking sore water and not alkaline water, it's something wrong. And, you're like, oh, this is just the way I live. No, it's something wrong with you. Start telling people there's something wrong with them. You're weird. Tell them, you're weird. Why are you acting like that? Yo, what's up with you? What's up? You need to talk. Like I said, have the right people around you and never be in a situation where you have enablers around you. Do not keep yes men. Keep people with firm convictions that will tell you right from wrong. Robin didn't know right from wrong because he couldn't read. He couldn't read. And nobody read him bedtime stories and told that man how to read. And that's all we're going to talk about this episode because... Nobody read him bedtime stories. Nobody taught this man how to read. And they just let him go on through life. And that's sad. So sad. Thanks for coming for the first episode. I know that got deep. That got deep. See you next episode. Peace.